Hi guys, well welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well in this episode we're going to be getting stuck into the back part of the plot. Now it's like a jungle at the back part. We're going to show you what it looked like before. And we'll give you a couple of updates. I, I didn't have the cam, well I did have the camera recording but I stopped recording because was the profanities which was coming out of my mouth uh, due to what was happening to my hands. Um, well we couldn't... <laughs> We couldn't really record it, so I just done snippets of what it, out, what we uh, we did. Uh, there was a load of hawthorn in there, and there was a load of um, brambles, and there was um, rose up, and every single one of them things I've just mentioned have got thorns, and they ripped my hands to shreds. And um, I've got a little clip here to show you. This was two days after we done this. Um, we did it over a period of about five or six days, and um, we took literally took about. 30 of these things out of his hands was one it was an off arm but went straight through me thumb my hands have healed up wonderfully now but um you know it only takes me a couple of days for them to heal up but uh this is what it looked like well guys as you can see here every one of them oh i'm gone every one of them cuts Every one of them little spots there, uh, red marks, are uh, thorns sticking, uh, are still stuck in my hands. <laughs> I know, but I can't, I'm trying to, you bugger, don't get on my knee. Oh, God, cat. Uh, all me, oh, hang on, swing this one over. All my hands, some of them are right in my fingers as well. Look at them ones there. Uh, these these are all fawns and um and bramble um but yeah if you look at my fingers hang on look at them there all there every single one that one's infected there i need to dig that one out uh look at this hand uh but yeah all these here through um cutting all them brambles back uh, yesterday I've been picking them out all last night but um, and the night like I say I'm, I'm looks like I've got a pile more to pick out yet but every one of them is where the form is still stuck in the red ones the ones which are a different color they're they're the ones where I've got thorns out but, uh, yeah wonderful a lot eh? Ooh. So as you can see, my hands were pretty, looked pretty sore there, but it was a lot worse than that um, two days earlier. We sat there for two days um, with tweezers and needles picking them out. Um, I literally um, covered my hands in them. I was wearing gloves, but the gloves were a waste of time. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to show you um, taking it all out. Um, we're going to be chopping the trees down. Mike from Potting Along comes over with his chainsaw later on in the video. He chops a couple of the tougher trees down. Um, we give all the trees to Rick for his fence. I'll show you what Rick's doing. Um, what else? Oh, we, we, we put a load of um, horse manure down the back of the, the, the bed as well um, to tidy it all up. And then we got some rhubarb because that's what we're going to be putting down the back. I was going to stick some flowers there, but then I decided rhubarb, why not? Let's get some more rhubarb. We do like rhubarb. And um, that's what, what we're, we're going to be doing in this video. You see me felling trees after a fashion. Um, there's, there's a lot of little clips now. I was going to do like stop, start, stop, start. But I thought, what the hell, let's throw it all together. So you get some idea of what we're doing. I'll put it in the best order I can, how we, how we went about doing it. And then you get to see um, you get to see the back all cleared at the end. And the rhubarb waiting to go in. So check this out and we'll be right back. Well, today I'm just going to try and cut, trim some of this stuff back here and I can work my way into the back here and tidy it all up. So that's what we're doing. And get rid of all this, which is growing all over the bloody show. So a quick look at what it looks like now and, uh, well, we'll get it all tidied up and show you what it looks like in a bit. Onwards and upwards. So as you see, we cleared all the brambles back to the fence. Brambles are on the other side, which is not a problem. In fact, they do help keeping the little darlings from climbing over. But I need to do that side, so we've done half of it. I get on with the other half shortly, and we'll take that tree out as well. I think 
so that's a job to do but yeah we're going to cut everything right back to the fence tidy it all up then we'll come in and tidy this lot up as well but before we do that we need to address all the the brambles which have grown crazy in fact they can grow up to a foot a day them buggers you can actually see them if you time lapse them over a period of an hour you can see them crawling over the floor so you can imagine how, how much they've grown in a year anyway we'll come back to them there's buttercup you're wondering where she is <laughs> she's keeping away from the fawns that's the main thing you get in some peculiar places you do eh? well guys what we're trying to do is work his way down the back of the fence here we started here cutting all the bramble you can see where they're growing from the the outside we've been cutting them back although i've got to cut this here tidy this up as well but i've got to cut that tree out so i need my saw and then we like i say we're working his way back down that way we've already done the other side trouble is up buttercup driving me nuts as per usual <laughs> if she keeps like that we're all right but yeah we're, we're working his way along here I really need some better gloves than what I've got there. I'm cutting my hands to bloody ribbons, but hey ho, it's all in a good cause. But uh, hopefully, shortly, this will all be done. Be able to walk along here and see what what rubbish we've got here, what we can get rid of. Got to do a bit more cutting here. Cut that down there. I've got to cut them trees out and that tree. And then we're going to put a load of horse manure right along the, the back of this, uh, back of here. Now this is, you can see now, this you can see the fence, you couldn't see it before. So this is a, an after, before we, we, we after we've uh, cut everything back. But um, yeah, this that tree's going, these are going. I'm going to get my saw and uh, we'll set the camera up and show you me chomping them down. These are, like I say, we're just going to cut them off at the, the base. And uh, probably end up giving them to to Rick. I just trim all the bits off him, and then uh, give them to Rick, and he can use them for his um, his his fence that he's creating. But yeah, these three things there to be gone, and that tree there to be gone, and then we're just gonna pile in the arse and you're right away along the back of the fence. to leave that other one I'll bring the chainsaw over off uh, I have to get Mike with his, with his chainsaw I think have a lot or get uh, my rip saw this uh, saw I've just used here is absolutely useless anyway I'm just gonna tidy these up and put them on uh, Rick's plot for him uh, he can use these for his um, his fence, right? Back in a moment. You come down to the back of my plot now. You take a left, or take a right even, and uh, you can see right along the fence. You couldn't even see there. You couldn't see Buttercup. Uh, yeah, she's there uh, supervising. 
the only thing I haven't took out so far is this tree um, and I took the smaller ones out and it was a, a nightmare doing it but um, yeah this one here we're gonna have to use a chainsaw on it but it doesn't stop me from putting the horse manure all the way along here that's what we're gonna do all the way along right past buttercup right to the other end so the game plan for today is uh, coming in here and putting horse manure oh bloody another hedgehog there they're everywhere these bloody things there's another one look at it <laughs> you're a bit out a bit of late young lady or you whatever you are unbelievable we, we had one about the same size uh, yesterday in the in the greenhouse with buttercup Anyway, forget about the bloody yeah, jogs are everywhere. Uh, however, they do keep a keep a tally of all them slugs. But yeah, what we're going to do? Load of horse manure all the way along here. I've got my wheelbarrow up there, so we're going to have at it. And uh, we'll see you in a bit when we get the first load in that. That's the first load, probably take me three or four loads to do this side, well three loads to do this side, three loads to do the other. We're talking six trips in total, it will kill me. Well that's the first side done, now we've got to go and do the other, all the joy. So we've got uh, this side now to do, so I'm going to get the another barrel of horse manure and we'll spread it along here, so we'll be right back folks.
Well, I think one more should take care of that. Like I say, we're nearly done. Yeah, definitely one more should take care of that. Like I say, we've just got this bit here to do. Alright, let's go and get one more batter for the fun. So as you see, we've uh, cleared it all now, uh, we put our awesome manure all the way along, just need to take that all thrown out, um, get the chainsaw on me, me, me um, bow saw on that shortly, uh, like I say, the, the faffing I had with that last one, um, certainly not going to struggle with that one there, but yeah, we now we've cleared all these, that, that I've got to sort the handle out on that, that's going to be kept used for for putting our spignore in and taking it to your plot I'll donate that to the allotments eventually when I, when I sort the bar out it tips up that as well, the bucket that bin our kid needs to come and collect it and all these paving stones and what have you need to be um, sorted out I still haven't got rid of that bin yet uh, even though I've offered it nobody's come forward it's a cup she's been a good girl today, she's kept out the way and that's what it's all about some um, scaffolding boards there but they're not the right size for what I need unfortunately I'm just gonna move that them frames me um, out of the water there before they start to rust because uh, they're for me dahlias and that's another thing we need to tidy them up here all these uh, these are blueberries I'm thinking of putting these in the, the front part of my plot there's another blueberry there so I'm not quite decided what we've got to do but what the next thing I'm going to do is go and wash my wheelbarrow so uh, see you back up at the at the greenhouse up there well guys as you can see for as far as the eye can see we've just spread some moss manure all the way along the back of the fence we're going to be putting more rhubarb up there we're just going to have rhubarb all the way along here once we get rid of that all form We'll take that out, I get Mike with his chainsaw hopefully, and we'll give it to Rick. Saw an hedgehog um, again around here before. Little hedgehog, we're every bloody way. Little fat thing it is, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, so that hawthorn's coming out, that's what that is there. It shouldn't be there really, but it's coming out. And uh, might not take that one out as well this is on this it's going in my side of the fence but it's growing outside the fence so it's it's pretty easy for someone to climb up and climb in over so what we're going to do i'm going to take it back get the chainsaw on it and chomp it off so that it's so they can't use it as a, um, a lever to get in i think this one might be coming out as well and that one there, these shouldn't be here. These uh, these trees that have, have self seeded. These are well, this this is all half on along here. Um, as you see, these are all bloody brambles. And by the way, guys, if you look, if there's no brambles, I've thrown anything over the fence. They've all been bagged up and touched at tip. You can see the um, you can see the leaves on the on the ground there. You would have noticed if I've thrown anything on top of them. 
but yeah, we've uh, kept it kept it clean. And uh, anyway, the next job is to, to tidy this lot up. Well, I'll get round to it shortly, but this is the main thing. This was an eyesore and I needed to deal with it, so it's dealt with. Anyway, it's done. So here we are, cleaning Guang's wheelbarrow. And one's uh, oh. More nice and tidy. Right, anyway, I think that's clean up. Clean wheel, by the clean rake. Uh, keep your tools clean and they'll last for a long, long time. Anyway, back up to the up to the plot. Uh, go up there, and we can uh, have a nice cup of coffee. Got a westerly wind blowing at the moment. There's Maggie there. It's keen. He's uh, ready for chopping the trees. He's already just started chopping them down now. I've only just got here. Hey up the key. Hey up. Right, and go. Let's get this and push it. Yeah, give me a sec. Just put this on the stand. Don't fall with that in your hand. I'm gonna say, if I push it that way, hang on, let's just put this out of my hand first. It doesn't give you a chance, does it? <laughs> he's there, he's very keen, this lad. Just that one there, isn't it? Yeah. Just this one now. Plan is Well, guys, as you can see, we chopped the trees down. This one we just pushed over there. 
<laughs> it, what they did when they chopped the trees over there, they just leave them, let them drop. Uh, but this here, I'm going to take it and put it onto to Rick's plot. I'm going to trim it all, obviously take all the, the bits off it. And then give it Rick for his fence. Uh, this one, I'll do the same thing, take it over to Rick, give it him for his fence. There's a buttercup there, come to survey all the, the damage. But um, yeah, Mike had got in, he was already at it, he was already chomping the trees down, talk about keen. But um, as you can see, we've got that one out now, which is the main thing. That's the one what I wanted to get out. So I'm going to put my gloves, me, well, can I say, bloody plasters. Uh, I'm going to put my, <laughs> my useless gloves on and we'll tidy this lot up and uh, we'll, we'll have another look when it's all done. Yeah, Rick will be chuffed with all this stuff. These are the end results of... Uh, chomping the trees down and as you can see there's a load of it here this this be going straight over onto Rick's plot and he's going to put it into his fence uh, we took a small tree out up there we took a tree out here we took the top off that tree it's fallen into there so what we need to do is go around and collect them them trees out of there not that it matters to be quite honest with you because there's a uh, 40 50 year old trees what have been felled and just left over there at the top um, because it is a woodland after all. Uh, we took that tree out there, so we're going to put rhubarb all along here now. But as you can see, there's bloody brambles here cro coming over the fence. Unbelievable. I'll tidy that up before I knock it on the head. But um, anyway, as you can see, it's all nice and tidy here now. What we've got to do is sort this lot out. Let's do that when we get my fingers back to normal walk up to uh, Rick's plot there's all these sweet peas there which he's going to be putting along his fence here this is his fence he's making out of um, all these trees which uh, keep people keep giving him I've given them uh, these are the branches and what have you that I've saved for him I've left them here for him and uh, he's probably can use them in these this fence in here, what he's got here. And maybe he can continue up there, I don't know. But uh, yeah, um, I think they'll help him out. And he did say, if I've got any, bring them over and leave them here. So that's what we've done. Happy days. Well, guys. Um, just acquired some rhubarb here, uh, some crowns, they're only small, but then again, from a small acorns, do great oak trees grow? And, and like I say, all this here, I'm going to put down at the back of the plot. Now we've already got rhubarb here in this bed. Starting to come, starting to come up now, as you can see, along with all the spring bulbs starting to come up as well they cut like three rows all the way down here but these are the rhubarb crowns here and um, so we've got rhubarb in this bed but what i intend to do little long tail tits in the tree there very chipper we've uh, got well it's trying to snow well it's more sleet than anything else Onions are doing all right underneath there. Um, so what we're, we're planning on doing is putting right along here um, the rhubarb. So all the way along right to the other end. And um, I'm going to do that in the next few days. I'm just going to leave the rhubarb sitting on the top here for now. But it doesn't matter. In fact, what the old timers do is they dig the rhubarb out and leave it sitting on the top through the winter months and replant it come spring. But um, I'll plant it before then. But yeah, where we've took all these brambles and everything, cut them all back. Where did that bugger's come from? Oh, well, let me guess, that branch there it snapped off. Well, they can have it back.
<laughs> yeah, as you can see, this is the other. You can actually see through here now. Notice, guys. There's no, no, no none of the um, brambles. I never threw none back. These are all. These are growing from the outside, inside. As you can see there on the fence. So yeah, we took them all to the tip. Everything, but we. What we we cut down here. We just need to get rid of that tree tree the trunk there. I think Rick will have that when I see him. I've got to ask him first. I don't want to put it on his plot and he doesn't want it. I'm sure he will. But yeah, all the um, rhubarb's going all the way along here. Right, it's starting to drizzle again. So we're going to get this uh, rhubarb dumped here. And then I'm going to clean my wheelbarrow. So we've uh, put the rhubarb in, it's about 15, 16 crowns. Um, we're leaving them here for now. It's, been, it's too damp to be messing about, it's, it's cold. I'll probably do it when it's, when it's a warmer day, when, it, when the sun's out and it's a bit drier. Um, we'll get my mat and we'll dig these in. And we're going all the way along here, right along the back. And uh, hopefully we'll get some really nice rhubarb here. Leaving these out over winter you can do that if you want to the old timers dig the the crowns out they leave them on the top of the soil throughout the winter months then replant them in spring and they, they claim that the um the rhubarb tastes sweeter we're not going to do that we will be planting them shortly but i've just shown you where they are they're all sat here sitting on the top of the soil or on top of the horse manure in fact um, that's where they are so yeah all the way along that's where they're going So as you can see there, that's all done now. We've just got to get the rhubarb in. I'll leave the rhubarb. It's, it, the ground's solid at the moment. Um, the, the weather changes like that, and that hurt because the bloody thorn's still stuck in that thumb. <laughs> Pain chest as well. That don't help. Um, it's doing all, cutting all them bloody brambles and, all, and pushing the trees and swinging the trees about. I think I've torn some here again. Um, but hey ho. Um, so the next job I'm going to do, well actually what I'm going to do, I've got a, a friend of mine, um, Sue, she, she went up to Wicks and she saw all this um, compost, uh, Jack's Magic, same as this, um, for £2.50 a bag, so anyway she, uh, she I just bought, I think she bought 14 bags and uh, she told George, another mate of mine, he went up and bought 10, so I was passing so I drove in and there they were so I bought myself 10 bags, I put, f at the night, it was getting late at the night, so I put five in the greenhouse and left the other five in the, the lock-up over the other side. So I'm going to show you the clip now, me going over there to get the rest of the compost, and it, we, the reason why I'm showing you is because there's some planters over there which we're going to be using in the video, right, after showing you this um, compost. Just her to be in the way. I'm just bringing some of this uh, Jack's Magic over from the other side of the allotments. Uh, I bought it from Wix uh, the other day for £2.50 a bag. Uh, I've got five there. I've got another five to bring over. Well, there's three there. I'm going to bring another two over with some chicken pellets in a minute for my girls over there. They've got, got food. We got bags of food in the shed, but I want to get them another one more bag, and make sure they're okay. Don't want to be running around like an idiot, try to find some chicken food in the next week. Yeah, I'm being circled by a by a temptress here. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> What's she like? Anyway, I've got. Less of the chatting, let's get this in the greenhouse. I'm on my air phone at the moment, so when it's done, we'll have a quick look at it. But yeah, Jack's Magic, £2.50 a bag from Wix in um, in, in um, Clifton. This is my little lock-up that I've got over the other side of the allotment. Uh, we put five bags of uh, compost in here last night. I've moved three, took them over to my plot, so I've got to take these two and uh, might take a few more plant pots over as well and do some more um do some more planting 
uh, metal bucket there what I do I hang that over my fire get some hot water get the fire going uh, get some hot water so I'll be washing me my greenhouses with the jet wash in hot water hopefully in the next week or two yeah all the plant pots up there there's a pile of them got hundreds of them pile underneath that lot it just goes right back right um about two meters yeah anyway i'm going to get this lot out some roofing felt there if anyone needs any it's just like different things what i've, I've got it's a load of chain there there's a big bucket of brand new chain <sighs> stuff must be 100 meters of it don't know what i'm gonna do with it we'll find some though oh we've got 10 bags of jack's magic there uh 50 quid's worth pay 25 quid two pound 50 a bag i think that's the result i just brought some more planters over so guess what we're going to be doing shortly some of these are starting to come up now Uh, as you can see there the hyacinths someone asked me I think it was Sean he said how do you know what you know what the, what the flowers are what are growing in the pots well I keep all the labels so you know you just look at the label look at the look at the, the flower and away you go but yeah these are quite straightforward these are all hyacinths these one this one here which is for some reason pushed up well, it ain't now they're all um oh god what are they i think what they are irises that's what they are that's i think then just not looking at these uh nothing happening well they're just starting to just starting to see the green bits on the top so these won't be long before they'll be firing up nothing with these planters here a few coming up here but hey ho anyway we've got a uh, we've got some more pots so we're going to get to some more planting i think today so as you see there we've uh, got a lot a lot more compost uh, yeah that that chain what you saw in the shed there it's about 100, 100 yards of it um, a friend of mine said do you want this chain mark i said what i said to, I, I asked him i said have you got a piece of chain i need a piece of chain for me gate to stop people coming through my gates, uh, you know, when I'm um, at the front of my house, uh, let, them, let them use the, the smaller gate. So he says, yeah, I've got you some chain. Hey, he turned up with his big bucket of chain. He said, there you go, mate. I said, you're jack kidding me, aren't you? He said, no. I said, there you go. So I've got loads of it, so I'm glad you wanted some. Got rid of some now. Anyway, yeah, I've got power of that as well. We are thinking of using some of that chain on the back to stop people driving down the back. Um, because they still do and we chain the bloody back up when it's like it is now it's very dangerous anyway that's all another story but um what i'm going to show you now is me planting some of these spring bulbs and um, some daffodils and more tulips i think we piled them into these buckets or was it the alliums i can't remember but i'm going to show you that anyway so this is what we're going to be planting today there's a uh, eight packs of narcissus here um different ones there's two of each of them two of each of them and two of each of them um now these, you get 10 Narcissus, these are called Smiling Twins, so we've got 20 of them. We've got these Acusphus Pleasant Eyes, uh, you only get 5 of them. And then we've got these uh, Large Cup Professional uh, Einsteins, uh, you get 10 of them. These are particularly good, I like these, uh, Double Rip and Winkle. Uh, ring, is it Winkle? Vink, rip, double Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again you get 10 of each of them so they've gotten 20 of them they're beautiful I, I do like these ones and we, I also like these ones as well these um, double replete and uh, we've got 20 of them so we've got 20 40 60 75 so we've got 75 bulbs to plant into two planters uh, I'm just going to head off up to the top of the allotment get a little bit of arse manure to, to put in the base the bottom of them and then what we're going to do fill them up with some clover multi-purpose and then we're going to plant all these which you see here so we'll be right back folks now then let's get some bulbs out that's 
so these ones haven't, I, I could have left these ones because they ain't actually started to germinate yet but they will do shortly as soon as they get in here I say I'm gonna push them in all around the border one there right next ones are these uh, large cup uh, Professor Einstein They're going to look absolutely awesome, these. I've got to do this pretty fast because I've got a mate of mine who's going to be shouting me over in a minute. He's, uh, got a, he's doing a, a greenhouse and he's uh, just building the base. And um, Yeah, so can you give me an hand in a minute? Oh, that one, look at the state of that. I won't be using that. These are all right, though. Like I said, we're just checking them all, making sure they're all okay. See how they're all, there's, there's four um, daffodils there. Like I say, you can plant them really close, it doesn't matter. Anyway, these are all in here. Now all I've got to do now is uh, pop this up. Well, we've gone through some compost in the last uh, week or two. Look here, I've got another, well, 25 bags there and there's another 30 or so in the in the, the other shed, I think. Right, anyway, that's, that's them. Put that down to one side. Move these over now. Now, these are small, these are 25 centimetre, so, and these ones are 20, so we'll be putting these around the perimeter. And these ones will go in the middle, so that's the idea. I do like these uh, double rip van, van Winkle. They're really, really nice. Very unusual uh, daffodil. I say you pile them in. Don't be scared of getting them in really close, side by side. That's the trick. get one there right okay now we're planting these ones in the middle these are the bigger ones wow they are bloody big too they're going to look absolutely awesome these when they all come up Stay where you are, Buttercup. I don't think we're going to get them all in here, but we're going to try. Yeah, these ones are just starting to germinate, so... Get your head out of that bucket before you're drowned. What's she like? Can't take her anywhere. Don't mind, she's got her own bowl in there. There we go. Whoops. Shouldn't have done that. Now then. Oh, we've just got enough in there to tip in. I assure you guys, I didn't, I didn't uh, measure these that compost. That was a good, that was lucky guess. That. Anyway, there's another two. <laughs> I'm going to tidy my mess up. And we're going to start all over again with something else. I think. Like I say I've got tons of stuff to get planted. 
But yeah, these are all, these two pots here just uh, got daffodils in. So that's, oh, I think we've just got yeah. a few more left to plant now. Um, a few more um, pots left in the, the shed. Uh, and we're going to plant a few in the borders as well. I'll, I'll try and to, to throw them into the next clip because this one's getting too long and there's a few other things I want to show you. Um, Buttercup's munch, crunching away here at the moment. Um, it was here yesterday, yesterday, Buttercup was inside there, just took the water bottle out actually because she doesn't like it in there, it's too hot. Once I take it out, she'll go in. But um, yeah, she was sat in there yesterday and uh, in sh who should come walking in? This baby hedgehog, I thought, you cheeky bugger. It was, it was all, but, well, it wasn't. It was just starting to go dusk as it comes strolling in. And uh, well, let me show you. This cheeky little bugger coming in here. They're supposed to be scared of you, aren't they? Honestly. It's it's got a little lump on its side there, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> it's coming for the food. Well guys, this cheeky little bugger there. Just come waltzing in. Come waltzing through the up here. And uh, <laughs> why not get in the pot with the food? Oh, it has. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Think Buttercup's a bit, a bit annoyed. Let me have a look. But how, how are you, Buttercup? She couldn't care less. Yeah, Buttercup's fast asleep in her bed. And this little bugger is chomping down on um on Buttercup's dinner. So yeah, it chowed down on the, on the um, I think it was a gold cat. It likes the gold cat. In fact, it likes to sit in the gold cat eating it. Uh, Buttercup, she's munching on um, the, the Felix at the moment. She likes that. She's not too fond of the gold cat, but hey ho. Uh, as you saw, we've got a lot of hedgehogs. Um, there was one in the video at the back of the plot there, there running along the back of the fence. I think it was Tiggy Winkle giving birth and um, all these baby hedgehogs are everywhere. Uh, they're all about yay big, so I think they will survive the winter. Um, this baby hedgehog, what, what you saw in the video, um, is living under um, the water tank across the, the road um, on my next door neighbour's um, plot. So it's quite safe actually. Um, I hope we might have someone coming here. We'll try and, try and get to the end of the video before um, before I get call, called away. We've got a, a job going on over the other side of the allotments this morning. So I'm going to be heading over there just to give me moral support. I won't be doing any work. I'm too poorly. Oh, it was John going past to get some uh, horse manure. That's all right. Yeah, so um, I've got one more video to show you, and that's um, a couple of coins that I acquired. I've been after this particular one for, for God knows how long. It could be three years. Um, they're very rare they, do they come up on the market, but when they come up, you've got to snap them up and uh, at any price. And uh, yeah, this um, Arleman, um Viking longship, uh, 1982 with the baby crib, uh, are not easy to find. The 1982 without the baby crib, oh, you can find them left. You can, there's hundreds of them, but the ones with the baby crib, not a chance. And what it is, it's a counter stamp. It's only tiny, so tiny. You need a, a magnifying glass to see it, but. You've got to have them all. You got you got to you got to buy them all. You can't just have the one. <laughs> you got to have every one. Anyway, we finally got them. Uh, so I've got a few other coins what I bought as well. Um, we have got some more um, coins which I just bought um, just the other day. So I'm not going to throw them in the video. We'll Same until next week. Are you coming up here? You. Okay. So guys, these are what I've been adding. I've been adding more of these pandas to my own collection. This one, that one, and that one. That one's 2017. Or is it 17, 18, and that one's 22. They're all mixed up at the moment, but um, they go from these ones go from about 2011. 
and uh, yeah these are what we've just been spending some money on <laughs> they're about between 30 and 40 quid each these silver proof pandas they're all legit but they are, they are awesome now what i'm going to do is start collect these there's another um several more um from 2000 cent to 2000 or 2000 to 2000 cent that'll be the next target um so watch this space but they are absolutely awesome so to top the the coins off which i've, I've been waiting for actually there's a few more coins but yeah we've got these silver proofs there cycling um gymnastics um forget what that one is now but i've got a full set of these silver proofs i've actually got three of them um so that's the silver proof but the one coin i was really after was this one to the right where my thumb is there's a little mark now this is a 1982 viking longship with the baby crib mark from the isle of man um it's in mint condition I need to put it in a case now this thing costs as much as one of these things here there's a couple there there's, there's, I've got I think I've got about nine or ten of them no sorry I just bought a new one so yeah there's about 12 of them I think we've got of these these are Kew Gardens by the way that's the one what I just bought uh, I'm trying to think of where I put the other one of these. It's somewhere. Um, it might be in here. Somewhere in here. Oh, there's a very rare one. It's about two and a half, two, 250, 300 quid, that one. That ain't silver proof, it's just Cooper Nickel. The trouble the thing is, it's what the card it's on. And it's a 2009, whereas that one's the 2011. So, yeah, these are silver proofs. I'm oh, sorry, no, these are all these uh, strike your owns. Again, loads of strike your owns in here as well. I'd love to know where that other coin, the, the other one of these is. Never mind. But yeah. The one I was really after has come, that one there. Been after that for nearly three years. Absolutely awesome. It's uh, another date run, which we've been trying to sort out. Uh, 1985, uh, sorry, 1895, 1895. The only difference is that's the young Ed and that's the old Ed. That's where she transferred. Transi transitioned into our last portrait I say I've got every single one of these except for um, 59 which is there which is missing and 49 I've got every other one um, and then these William and George the fourth, uh, William the third, William the fourth. Uh, these gaps here, well, they didn't make, they didn't make um, coins for for these. But I, I'm up about one shot, I think, just one coin. I'm shot so I'm three coins in total from the 1800s. We'll get them shortly. But these are some beautiful coins. Anyway, that's me farvings. Actually, just bought three more packs of them there. Uh, full date runs, um, which are the continuation of these up to um, when they stop making them. Right. Anyway, that's that's what we've been wasting our oh. money. You're a bit late, aren't you? Eh?
late to the party. Well, she's finally turned up, uh, a bit of a stop out. She didn't bring any mice in today, which is good. No birds, no nothing except for herself. She's got a winter coat on as well, just like me. But um, yeah, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as you see, Buttercup's fine. She's a... Uh, She's got a full winter coat on here. In fact, she doesn't even feel the cold, to be quite honest with you. And, uh, yeah, she's, uh, no, she's parked herself down on me. Uh, I'll give her a couple of snuggles. Ooh. She lovely. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a one man's cat, this one. Uh, I was told, if you get a cat, you get all these girls come chasing after you. It's not true, you know definitely not true <laughs> don't want no girls thank you very much no boys <laughs> you all know, keep keep away i just keep my cat here <laughs> she doesn't answer well she does answer that but uh, hey ho as you can see guys she's fine aren't you hey hey well until next time thanks for watching we'll try and get this video up a bit later on i hope you enjoy it when it does get there so for me and Buttercup, you stay safe and I'll see you back here for some more next week. Which uh, we've already working on the video as we speak. So there you go. <laughs> I'll tell you more about it when, it, when I finish it. Bye for now.